How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now most homeowners that have a gas water heater like the one behind me eventually are going to have to relight their pilot light. Now although you saw a lighter in the image for this video, hopefully if you have a modern Honeywell valve or a modern valve like the one behind me, you shouldn't need a lighter. It should have everything you need right here. And overall the process is very easy, but I'm going to walk you through the steps, show you the example of it working correctly. But like most of my videos, if that doesn't work, if the simple process of relighting your pilot light doesn't work for you, I will go over the other components in the system and also show you the internals, show you the burner, show you the actual pilot light location to help you in your troubleshooting, hopefully saving you time and money as you troubleshoot your issue. So let's jump into the normal pilot lighting procedure on this Honeywell gas valve. So let's start off by just ensuring that your gas valve is turned on. So you can follow your gas pipe, whether it's rigid like this or flexible, follow that up until you find a ball valve. So parallel to the pipe is open, when it is perpendicular like this, that is closed. So for this, we're gonna make sure that it is in the open. And when it's open, make sure that we're not smelling any gas. If we're not smelling any gas, then we're ready to go. If you do start to smell gas, I would recommend closing this back off and calling in a professional if you're not comfortable with troubleshooting further. Okay, so starting off the lighting procedure, because we don't smell any gas, I'm going to remove this cover here. So you can just pinch that cover and it will come off because I do want to focus in on the sight glass down there, which will let you see the pilot light and see what's going on. But first, what you want to do is make sure that the, this temperature dial, the control dial here, is in the off position. So go ahead and let the control valve sit in the off position for 10 minutes. That will make sure everything clears out. So what happens is if you're trying to light the pilot light and usually you go past three failed attempts, the control valve itself will go into a safety mode, which does not let you continue. So you need to turn it to off and let it sit for 10 minutes or more. That will clear out that safety status and then you can try to relight. So with the gas valve on, you first will set it to pilot. So you turn where, you'll turn where the indicator line is pointed to pilot. Then when you press and hold in, you should hear a small hissing, which is gas being delivered through this pilot line here. And then while we press and hold, we are going to click the igniter and sometimes you'll have to click that many times to get it to light. So I'll go ahead and do that, but I want to focus in on the viewing glass so you can see the pilot light actually light up. So I like to click the igniter to know I'm looking in the correct location. Then I will turn the dial to pilot, press down and hold. Remember, you have to continue to hold. And then I will click the igniter a few times. This time it started up on the first one, which is not always the case. And often you'll have to click it several times. So you need to continue to press and hold the dial. And on these more modern units, the status light will actually start to flash once you can release the dial and then turn on the water heater itself. All right, so I released the dial. And now looking through the looking glass here, I'm going to turn the dial to pass the A setting and then we should see the burner ignite. There we go. Now we're back in business. Now hopefully that went as smoothly for you and if it did, don't forget, we did change the temperature setting. So be careful because you might have increased the hot water, the maximum hot water temperature in your house. What I recommend you do is in 30 or 45 minutes when your water heater has gotten to that temperature, go to a vanity faucet all the way to hot, let it increase all the way to the hottest temperature and fill a glass, and then use your thermometer out of the kitchen, dunk it in there, and make sure it's 130 degrees Fahrenheit or less. 
I like to go about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. This is especially important if you have small children in a house because you do not want to have a scolding hazard because you increase the temperature too high. Now, if that didn't go as smoothly for you, I'm actually gonna take the burner out. I'll open up the unit. I'll show you all the other components that make this system work, which hopefully will help you troubleshoot your instance and get back up and running. So now to show you a little bit more of the internals and the other components, I'm just gonna loosen up the pilot gas line, the main gas line, and then there's two mounting screws here that you just have to remove. And then that will allow you to remove the burner and take a look at the unit. And now just for clarity, I do have my main shutoff, that ball valve in the off position to make sure we're not causing any leaks. Now, sometimes to get access to these screws, you do need to kind of push the insulation out of the way. All right, so here's your internals. Now you can get a much better look at the burner unit itself, making sure you don't have any issues. But specifically, since we were talking about the pilot light, this is what you're seeing here. So you got the igniter, which was giving you that spark. You have your thermal pile, which is located right here. This thermal pile gets heated up by the actual pilot light, which is going to be a flame located right here at the end of the pilot light gas line. This thermal pile heats up and that thermal pile creates enough current to power that Honeywell gas valve or control unit. So everything needs to be looked like it's in good shape here. You can get some buildup on that thermal pile. That can cause some issues where you're not getting the current needed. You should have no issues with your wires. These are the heat protection sleeves for your wires. That should all look good. You have a temperature switch here. So if the overall temperature got too hot, this would turn things off to reduce the chance of fires. And then you will see on the end of the unit here, so the way that works is the thermal pile has a white and red wire going to it. The white wire goes to the actual gas control valve and the red wire goes through this switch. If everything is operating correctly, no problem. It completes the circuit. If there is an issue where temperature is too hot, it will open up and it will close that off and then not power the control valve, shutting everything down. Now there is a small reset button right here. So if this were to open up, you can push that button and reset it, hopefully solving your issue. But if that keeps tripping, keeps opening up, it's doing its job and you probably have something internally going on. Now, all of these parts are serviceable. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them from multiple other locations online. And this is something you can troubleshoot yourself depending on your situation. But at least this gives you more of the internals and gives you a better idea of what a common setup looks like for the burner on your gas water heater. So now I'll reinstall everything, turn it back on and light the pilot light. So now I am gonna go ahead and reinstall this and get my pilot light lit again. So usually when reinstalling, the hardest part is getting uh, the getting the burner where it needs to be in there. So there usually there's a little uh, bracket or shelf that it can sit on. There's clips that clip on the side and give you the threads for these mounting screws. So getting everything lined up is usually a challenge. Also make sure your insulation is not pinched between the two surfaces and that the felt, there's a felt gasket on the back of it. Just make sure that's in good shape have everything tightened up. Once you get that, everything else is pretty much plug and play.
Let me know if you guys are running into any issues or just have any questions that I can help you with. Also, if you are still not getting the hot water you want at your shower or tub, that actually might be a limiter within the shower valve itself. Check out this video right here and I'll walk you through how to adjust that limiter in a Delta shower valve. So thanks for stopping by this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.